boys and girls. I hope you've had a lovely weekend and welcome back to our second week of home learning. Now this week we are going to start a new book okay and it's a little bit different from the book that we've done in the past. Now this book was the book that we did last week. This is our house and this is what we call a fiction book, a story book okay and a story book is full of made up characters and made up ideas okay and it doesn't really tell us any information about a subject at all or any facts okay so a fiction book is a story a made up book now the book we're going to do this week is a non-fiction book so it's the opposite to our book from last week so this is a fiction book and this is our new book which is a non-fiction book now a non-fiction book tells you information and facts about a subject okay so when we read this book we're going to get lots of knowledge lots of information about this, this subject so let's read the title let's build a house so what do you think our information book is going to tell us about boys and girls that's right it's going to tell us about building a house it's going to be information about materials and ways that you can build a house different types of houses different types of buildings okay so by the time we finish reading this book we're going to learn lots of facts and lots of information about houses and buildings okay so let's get started at reading our book and it says on here as well so I want to just show you it says a book about buildings and materials so it tells you on the front cover exactly what this book is all about Let's build a house. But what sort of house? There have been so many sorts, made from so many things. A house is a warm, safe place to live. We must make sure we choose the best materials to build with. A Mongolian yurt and a North American teepee. Down there, can you see? That's the yurt. And that's the North American teepee. Long ago, tents used to be made from wooden poles and skin stretched across them. Now they are made from metal and waterproof material, waterproof fabric. Now, boys and girls, waterproof fabric, okay, is what your raincoats are made out of. So when you're outside and it's raining and the water's coming down and it goes onto your coat, it falls off, it slides off, okay? The water doesn't go into your coat to make your clothes wet. So, just like a tent, okay, we have waterproof fabric on the tent. So, if it was to rain, you wouldn't get wet inside. The water would just slide off the tent. So, that's why we use waterproof fabric for tents. We could make, we could make a cabin of logs, chopped and stacked in a forest clearing. But we'd have to chop down a lot of trees. Log cabins were houses made by people living uh, in pine forests. And when you put the logs together, you need to cut joints in the logs like this so they'll fit together. Can you see? So the gaps between the logs were filled with mud, moss or hair to keep out the cold. So that's how they joined them together. And uh, boys and girls, I don't know if you know, but wood, okay, is trees. Trees are wood. Okay, so in order to get the wood, they would have to chop down the trees and use it to make the log cabins. If it gets really cold and snowy, we could make an igloo. There we go, making an igloo. We'd be safe in there if polar bears came a prowling. Igloos are built by the Inuit people. They may be built out of blocks of ice, but they are warm and cosy inside. Ice blocks are laid in a spiral, which means a round shape like that. The person on the inside has to cut the way out. So the person is inside helping build it and there's a person on the outside. And then when it's all built, they've got to cut a door so they can get out. In Sweden, which is a country, there, there is a hotel made entirely of ice. Even the beds. It melts in the summer when it's warm. I don't know how I'd feel about laying on an ice bed, boys and girls. If the weather was warmer, we could make a hut out of mud and sticks. We could give it a thatched roof, woven like a bird's nest. Boys and girls, I'm just going to plug in my... There we go, turn it down. 
So I mix with straw and plastered on the frame, dry, strong and hard. Okay, so here you can see we've got mud mixed with straw and then I've got to put it on the top like a thatched roof and it makes it nice and strong. See there? And it's woven like a bird's nest, like a bird's house. How about building a castle? We need to build high stone walls and fix on a strong wooden door. Then no one can get in unless we let them. Stone has to be shaped with special tools. So you can see the builder there. Okay, can you see he's got a hammer and a chisel and a mallet and he's using the mallet to hit the chisel and shape the stone into the right shapes to build the castle. And it says long ago oxen were used to pull heavy loads. So if you look there, that's an animal called an ox. Okay, and they used it to pull the heavy loads of all the stones because it's really heavy instead of horses. They used to use oxen. So you can see that everyone's coming together to help build the castle. A castle is huge. What about a little bungalow instead? Built from red brick bricks buttered with cement. Look, I've drawn a plan. There you go, so he's drawn a plan for the house before they've made it. And up here it says this is the wooden frame. And then here is tiles. Roofs are a frame of wood usually covered with tiles made of slate, clay or concrete. So up at the top that's your roof. So, so it begins um, as um, with wood, a frame of wood, and then they put sometimes concrete or slate, the tiles or slates on the top. And bricks are stuck together with cement called mortar. So you can see when you look at your houses, when you look at your houses, boys and girls, around the areas, you can see the bricks, okay, they're all laid on top and in between there is layers of cement and they're called mortar, okay? And that's how they stick them together. Let's order kit houses. Oh, it all comes on the back of a lorry. So a kit house is delivered on the back of a lorry. You can build them in a day. That's what the magazine says. Insulation goes under the roof and the spaces inside the wooden walls to stop heat escaping. You can see there in the roof, that builder there, he's laying down some insulation and it's, it's insulation is foam. Foam that's put in the walls and in the roof, okay? And the foam, it, it stops the heat from escaping. So when you're inside and you've got your, your fire and your heating on, is to stop the heating going out of the walls outside and letting the cold inside so it keeps you nice and warm inside your house. It says kit houses are delivered pre-built. Pre-built means they're already made in sections and sometimes they're already wallpapered. That'd be good, wouldn't it? So you can see there that driver's delivering part of the house that's already been made. And all you need to do is put it together. So about inside that's important too we need plasterboard walls to make the rooms on wall um, and underneath the floor we can lay wires for electricity and uh, telephone so let's have a look here look you see that man there you see he's put some wires down he's checking to see if the telephone works and you've got your wires coming down from your ceiling okay so you can see the wire going up from there to the ceiling so you can get your light and that's the switch to turn the electricity on and off so when you build a house you've got to make sure you have all the wires in the right place so everything works so you can get your electricity properly inside the walls um, inside walls can help hold up the roof others just divide rooms so boys and girls when you build a house okay you have um, all lots of different walls okay to separate to make lots of different rooms and sometimes you have a special wall called a supporting wall okay and your mummies and daddies will know if you've done any renovating if say you have two small rooms and you want to make it into a big one big room okay you can knock down a wall okay and make it into one big room but if that wall is a supporting wall you can't knock it down because it's keeping your roof up and if you knock it down it's gonna fall into the house all right so i've got to make sure you don't knock down any supporting walls
and it says here at the bottom they're laying the floors floorboard are made of soft wood like pine or spruce pine logs are sliced into floorboards floors can also be made of stone or concrete we mustn't forget a staircase and then the water pipes for the kitchen and the bathroom we could have a shower and a bath when the wires and pipes are in place, it's time for the plasterers to make the wall nice and smooth. So it's telling you boys and girls, you've got to make sure you put a staircase in, okay? So you can get to the upstairs uh, bedrooms and the bathrooms upstairs. And this person here is a plasterer. So after everything's built and all the wires are in and pipes for the water, because remember you've got to put pipes to uh, carry the water to the bath and to the shower and to the toilet. And once that all, that's all in, into your house, you call this man and he's a plasterer. And what he'll do is he'll come and put plaster on your walls. Okay, using this tool here, trowel, and he'll spread it onto the walls like this and make it nice and smooth, okay? And then once that's all dry, it takes a while, once it's all dry, you can start to decorate then. I'd like a conservatory, extension, uh, extension all made of glass, just like a greenhouse. It would be warm and sunny enough to grow tropical flowers and tomatoes. I don't think, may, I'm not sure many people use their conservatory to, to grow tropical plants. Maybe they do. Uh, but the conservatory trees I've seen, boys and girls, a lot of people use them as playrooms for their children or they use it as somewhere they can go and relax. Okay, But they do get very, very warm in summer because the glass makes the, makes the room really hot when the sun is shining onto the glass. It says in many countries, windows have two layers of glass to keep out the cold and drafts. It's called double glazing. So you can ask your mummies and daddies about double glazing. I bet you have them in your windows as well. A glass room sounds good, but if you want walls of glass, let's build a skyscraper. Then we could take turns riding up and down in a lift can see there boys and girls it's a very tall building called a skyscraper and it's a very tall and you find them in the cities okay and it says skyscrapers are made of steel girders reinforced concrete and strong glass they are designed to bend a little uh, in a strong wind so they don't blow down the use of steel girders means buildings can be built very high so you can see here these are um, steel girders and that means that they're nice and strong so that's how you get such tall buildings without them falling over concrete is cement with small stones added reinforced concrete is concrete poured around metal rods so it's very strong so you've got the metal and then the concrete is poured onto the metal which makes it extra strong in your building you can see there they're pointing at the builders and the builders are waving back and they're up very very high they're very brave i don't know if i could do that job boys and girls and then the children are going up and down in the lift so i think there'd be lots and lots of stairs i'd choose to build a little shack on an empty beach i'd make it from corrugated iron and driftwood and all uh, and, and all sorts of other things left by the tide and you lot could all help. A shack is one of the simplest houses. So you see there, there's corrugated um, metal there. And they're saying there's lots of things that have been brought up by the tide, which means brought up by the sea. Okay, when things that are washed up onto the sand. Corrugated metal is a cheap metal used for roofs and walls all over the world. But it gets hot in the sun and is very noisy when it rains. So making a shack is the easiest form of making a house but I'm not sure how strong that would be compared to one of our other houses there are all sorts of homes and all sorts of ways of building them from log cabins to skyscrapers if you could build a house which would you choose there you go you can see they're all making their own houses skyscrapers and a log cabin in the house she might be building a castle. Okay, boys and girls, and now we've got some pictures of how the materials are made. So it tells us how thatch is made, how wood is made, 
how stone is made, glass, cement and clay. So it tells us all about how we make them. So don't worry boys and girls, I've done a PowerPoint of this book so you can look through it again and you can have a closer look at how each of the materials are made. And then your last two pages, it says helpful words. So this is called a glossary. And here it tells you all the words, or a lot of the words that we've used in our book today. And it tells you what they mean, okay? So you can sit down, you can have a look on our PowerPoint and see if you can recognise any of the words of your mummies and daddies. And you see if you can tell your mummies and daddies what they are. See if you can be super clever. I think you will be able to tell, I think in, by now after reading this book, you'll know exactly what some of these words mean. And that is the end of our story end of our not story end of our book even miss mccalevy so i hope you enjoyed our book today um boys and girls it's a little bit different to uh, books that we've looked at before but i wanted to do something a little bit different for this topic so i'm going to put on a powerpoint of this book onto our website so you can have got reading it with your mums and dads as well and have a look at how the materials are made and have a look at the glossary at the back um, and think about which house you would like to build. Okay, well have lots of fun. Thank you for listening and I'll see you soon. Bye